What about making your song better? Hey guys, Ryan NZ here, back again with another tutorial. Thanks to the guys over at WA Production. These guys got amazing products, so go and check them out on their website right here. This tutorial today is a future house drop that I've made, and of course, just like the other tutorials that I've done, they um we you know we will be giving out the audio, the MIDI, the you know audio clips and stuff like that, everything that you need. So if you just want to forget this part of the video and skip ahead and get those goodies, you're welcome to do so. Okay, so I'll just play what we got here, and then I'll go through it. <laughs> Okay, so straight into it. Let's just start with the drums. I'll just play this part here because this is where everything's going. This is what they all sound like. You know, it's 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 got to have that housey feel in a way, so that you know. Maybe with some of the other electro tracks and stuff like that, you don't have to get so busy with hi-hats and try and find a bit of groove and a bit of swing. But definitely with this style, because with the lead, the lead actually has you know some swing with the quantization that it is important that you also try and match that with your percussion and your hi-hats. So I'll go through here what I've, um, what I've got. Top one here is the kick. Now you can see here that the audio was quite long. It certainly goes over halfway. So it takes up quite a lot of the of the beat. So what I've done is, the first thing I did was I came in here using the volume shaper. I just have a preset that I've made, but I, basically it's just a kick shortener. And you can see I've cut out a lot here. So if I, you probably can't hear this unless you've got really good headphones or subs, but if I take that away, If you've got good headphones, you'll be able to hear that there is like a low tail, and that's the sub that's going, you know, quite long. So that's too long, and I wanted a nice sort of tight, punchy kick, and I didn't want any sub decay from the kick to interfere with the bass line that I knew I was going to put in, the sub bass line that I knew I was going to put in. So that's why I've just kept this kick really short, it's just the punch, and then of course the sub part of it, I'm going to take care of that with the synth. So simple as that, got that engaged. Um, and the only processing that I've got on it is this plugin from Waves, and those are the settings there. It's just basically, yeah, it just kind of gives it more thump and a bit more snap, so it's a bit of top end. So sometimes I'll add a transient shaper on the top of the kick to help it click through, but sometimes I'll just use, maybe use a plugin like this. I always keep it different to kind of keep things sounding different every time. And this is just a slight bit of parallel compression bus, basically. So I got this glue compressor. I start with a preset, but then I tweak it like I really crank the threshold and stuff like that. And I got the Camel Crusher, which is no distortion. It's just this fat mode compressor. And I'm just rolling up the very low ends. And I basically, I've just trickled this kick drum off to this New York compression or parallel compression bus, just for a bit of extra, you know, thump. God, I hope I don't sound like DJ Carnage. I promise you I know what's going on here. All right. Now with the clap, you know, it's just a case of going through finding the right sounding sample and then and then placing it. You know, you don't just try and use one sample and then EQ, compress, distort, do all these crazy things to try and get it to sit with the kick. Just find the sample that sounds pretty much perfect without any processing. Um, and that's just what I've hopefully done here. I'll just play what it sounds like by itself. Being sent off again to a tiny bit of the um, parallel compression. 
to the reverb, the Lexicon Chamber reverb. And then again, this is another reverb, uh, the Valhalla Room reverb. And without, uh, and there's a bit of a, just a bit of a notch just here. There was like a, a funny noise or resonant sort of frequency that I could hear that could have been, uh, that sort of was affecting the top of like the, you know, the kick punch region um, here at 112 hertz. And there's just a slight boost there and a little bit of boost at the top end. So this is what it sounds like without the processing. And now with the processing. The next one. Just a loop, basically with some hats and a clap in it. No processing there, that's just sitting right in there. Another one, snap, so this is kind of a combination of a snare and a clap. Again, no processing at all. So I'll put those in the kick together, this is what we have now. And without the hat, these hat top loop here. And then I got a little reverse hat here. If I just show you what I've done here, I believe all I did was I found there you go. It was a um, it was I looked through, you know, plenty of different loops. And then I'll bring them into the sequencer and I'll see little bits or I'll hear little bits. And what I'll do is I'll pick a certain sound out and then I'll often just reverse it. So, and then I'll use that in a drum loop. So, you know, I try and stay away from using whole loops. Just choose one or two parts, put them in, reverse them, whatever, stretch them, push them down, push them up. And of course now in this, the new version of Logic, it's now got this great thing where you can click on the region and of course you come up to this top part and you can just click reverse now. I think it's called, yeah, non-destructive. So it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't affect the master file that's on your hard drive somewhere. It just reverses this one clip. So thank you to Logic for finally doing that. So that's just a reverse hat. Again, no processing. Just straight on there. And again, this is the ride that sits on the top. That comes in halfway through the drop. This is just a sample that I've been, you know, using. It's one of my go-to ride loop samples. And there's no processing, just a tiny little bit of uh, sent off to a bit of the lexicon reverb. That's it. So this is the drum loop. Like so. Okay, now then, let's do the synths. There are three, um, there are three main synths here. Which loop's the best one for me to use? <laughs> I'll just do these ones here. So these are my main two top layers, and there's a sub. So let's just start the very top layer. So it's just some white noise um, that uh, it started off originally, you know, a while ago as a bass preset, and I got no idea why, but I just went in there and turned it off, and then I just used the white noise. So it's the white noise one, and it's actually a tonal white noise in a way because if I go up the keyboard and then down, it, you can hear it's actually changing sort of the frequencies and you know w with tone as such. And therefore, I use this preset a lot to layer on top of leads to help them, you know, bite cut through just have a bit of you know a, an edge to them and I use this one again because 
when it's playing the you know it's following the melody so it's you know playing the same midi as the lead it actually does follow along a lot better than just the same the white noise doesn't change whereas this one does change and you can hear that i've actually with this wet mix wavetable mix i can um you know i can have none of this alarm wave but if i add it in so if you change this you know you can you can actually yeah you, know, you can change the wave there and it gives it a different flavor which ultimately gives the sound a different character because it's just changing the top end of the um, overall sound a little bit so that's what i'm doing again you'll get this preset uh just cut the lows out boosted the highs a little bit side chaining and this is just being sent to a waves H delay, which has just the basic stereo preset, um, just you know for that ping pong feel, and that's that. And then we have this is the main lead, which is doing all the work. Um, you know, if I can get away with doing one lead to do to do the job, I will, because it makes it so much easier to to have everything sitting in the mix. You know, if you try and layer this up with six other other leads, yes, that is a sure way to get a pretty big sound, but it's nearly a sure way to get a, you know, a headache from trying to mix the six sounds to sound great as one sound. Um, don't get me wrong, layering is great. I do a lot of layering, but if I can get away with doing it with as many, uh, with as few sounds as possible, then that's the way I'll do it for sure. And it's kind of what I did here. It's just, this is just one lead. And I'll play this now. Um, I'll play it without the side chaining. Um, okay. Now, um, here is my is my setup. These have actually all got the uh, some sort of envelope onto them because you can see how the volume's down, but they're actually obviously, you know, there's sound coming out of it. And the oscillator is as follows. Again, you know, the preset, you'll begin this. But the key to the sound that has that future sound, you know, is the slight, is, is the way that you set up the oscillators in terms of you know the um the semitones you know this is seven semitones up which is you know a fifth going up this one is minus five which is still a fifth but you know going down um i don't think yes yeah, so i think it's just these two it is it's just oscillator two and three and again the secret to that sound is having it set up right with the semitones and you you know you can choose these different there's lots of different wave shapes in there that you can choose and the FM is really good that you can start to play with these control a control B and the um, wavetable mix and that will produce some pretty gnarly stuff like that's where you can really make some cool you know hash you know air quote cool future sounds so this is a really good one um no no effects there bit of reverb uh it's being put through this wave shaper here and it's very important that you cut the low out as well so it doesn't sound you know if you try and have all this drive um in this wave shaper and you're not cutting the lows it gets pretty messy pretty quickly. So subtlety is the key when you're doing that sort of distortion-y aspect. Um, and it's being sent off to the filter here. So if I play this. Because, you know, you want it to have that sort of plucky bite to, to, to the sound. So you need to make sure you have the um, filter envelope set up. But yeah, that's the secret to this. And if you've got Spire, 
then there you go, just copy those two screens, this one and that one, or just download the preset, it's fine. But this is the sound. Um, and just in case you don't just want to check the MIDI out and download it, this is what the MIDI looks like. You know, from, you know, just thinking about it, I suppose a lot of these Future House songs, you know, you're playing, because it's a pluck sound and it's not a sound where you can really hold down the key on the keyboard and it will keep sustaining, you know, it's quite a plucky sound. Therefore, you know, to really get a bit of a, you know, a bit of a wriggle on with the, with the beat, you will play quite fast melodies. So that's why, you know, it's set out to be quite rapid playing notes. So that's the lead. So this is obviously without the top layer. And this is with the top layer. I don't know if you can hear the difference. And the processing behind this lead, the main lead, is a simple low cut at 220 hertz to get it out of the way at the bass line, which I'll show you uh, in a minute. This is just, this single band EQ is just for automation, like a filter. This Maserati plugin, um, I quite like the master one, and I just kind of, yeah, I play with the, the you know, the settings here, and it doesn't change it a whole lot. Um, it just probably, if I, let me just show you what the difference is. I'll take the side chaining off and that. Okay, so this is without this plugin. It just makes it a bit more aggressive, a bit, you know, a bit more, you know, it does actually squash it a bit, but therefore it kind of just sits right on top of the mix, which is what I'm looking for. So this is what that plugin does. I've got um, this one here, the Novelty Character plugin. It's like, you know, an exciter in a way. Put the target up to 50. Um, I did have to back off in the output because it was getting a bit hot, so I just backed off. So this is without, and then I'll add it in. a bit more sparkle as you can hopefully hear this is the ozone 6 imager and i was just really pushing this band here between sort of 300 and 1k and i'll uh, again i'll play it and then i'll add this in just for a bit more width in like the you know the body area of the sound we got here my trusty lexicon reverb. This again, this is a another um Bellhalla reverb. These are the settings here. And then we have, ah, uh, and it's actually side chaining to the kick. And then there's a sample delay on the reverb to make sure that the reverb is really wide. And then there's also that delay I was talking about. Doesn't do much of a difference, but particularly, you know, if there happens to be half a beat where the synth isn't playing, it just has a nice little trickle on effect, so it just sort of fills it up. Um, so that's that sound, and now we have the sub bass. Um, and again, the, these guys here are all playing the same MIDI. This is a uh, this is just a um, initialized patch in Anna. And all I've done is I've gone to this one here, the tri sub, one of my favorites for doing this type of work, the sub bass lines. It's just the tri sub, and all I've done is I've gone down one octave. I didn't do anything else. That's all I've done. 
Um, if we solo this and I just, I'll take the side chaining off again. I'll take those guys off. So this is what it sounds like. And then with this one here, I've gone in there and I've had the processing quite high. Um, you know, like it, it just helps when you're doing bass work, when you're doing roll offs on the bass frequencies. Um, yeah, it just does it in a way cleaner way, in my a way cleaner way, in a much cleaner method, shall I say. Yeah, so it's just something that I do. And again, I roll the tops off. I'll, um, I'll bypass that. I'll play it, and then I'll add this in so you can see what's... Hopefully, again, you can hear what it's doing if you've got some headphones on or some good speakers. So, yeah, I'm rolling off the top end and making it fit um, a whole lot better with the sound on top. So, obviously, I'll loop them, and then I'll just kind of play with this one here, bring this high filter this high cut, sorry, and I'll, you know, I'll bring it out, bring it down, and I'll just use my ear just to gauge, you know, where the best spot is for it to, you know, to roll off at. Um, and then this one here, sub enhancer, it's like an, another bus. I'm all about buses. I'm all about, you know, yeah, doing things pretty quickly. So I've always got buses for everything. So this one is a strange one. It, it's being sent to this bus here. So it does just give it a bit more beef. Um, yeah, I've, this is the setting here. I've run it through a bit crusher. I don't know why. And then I'm running it through some EQ here. And then through everyone's favorite plugin for bass, the R bass from Waves. Got the frequency there at 61. And then I've got this guy here just slamming in there, making sure it's only really the processing is just being applied to a very small end of the, the low frequency spectrum. Uh, add that back. Add them all together. Uh, actually, yeah, add them all together. <laughs> Like so, so those will be that's, those are the synths taken care of, um, the main ones. There's another one up here. It's called the Donk Bass. I'll just get rid of uh, the buses. You can see here it's something that I found, and again I've gone through and I've taken away three of the oscillators and I've just left the last one oscillator four so this is the the one that I'm using um, yeah it's just in the classic mode synth 2 was the wavetable um, that's what it looks like it's it is being as you can see here it it's got nine voices and it is being detuned um, and it's also being Put through some reverb, delay the chorus, um, which is not doing anything. The delay isn't doing anything. The reverb is not doing anything. That's not doing anything. So, yeah, the phase is doing a little bit. Um, and then the shape is doing a little bit here as well. Only a tiny bit of drive, which is why I didn't have to cut the lows out. So, that's all good there. Again, being run through the filter, it's just one oscillator. I have then again run it to my favorite uh, reverb, another reverb, and a tiny bit of parallel compression again. So that's that synth, and then I've got this sound here. Which I've done, Let's see if this works. That's because this is now stuffed up, but it was basically like this. I've drawn it in there. I often do a lot of my 
sort of modulation work just in this bad boy here. So I've done it like that pretty much. You can see it for some reason it had reset incorrectly. Um, and let's have a look. So it's a preset. It is a preset um, that I started with and I've just tweaked a few things to to help get the sound that I wanted. Mainly it's, you know, I've gone into the oscillators. Um, it looks like I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to tweak this one a little bit and I changed it around here to get this, um, this last oscillator, oscillator three, doing a slightly different sound. Um, and I just changed a few things up here with um, the phaser and the, uh, the reverb as well before I added my own reverb on. But um, that's oscillator one there, two, three, if anyone's screenshotting. You can see here, I wanted to make sure it was a poly synth, and I've just done the octave here. Yeah. So I, I did this I did this little demo in F minor. So this is just holding down this F note, just um yeah, one octave above from each other. And then So you can you can hear that it just is a normal sustaining synth, but I wanted it to have that swell up effect, and there's different ways I could have done it, but you know, all I did was I just drew it in here. With this, I changed it to one bar. Make sure you don't have it on, um, you know, like a quarter note. Otherwise, it'll just, it'll keep doing it on a kick. So, it'll do it on a beat, you know, each beat. So, I changed it to one bar, and then I just sort of drew the shape in that I wanted. And then I ended up just bouncing it to audio, and you can see here that I've just fine-tuned it. Get rid of that. I've just fine-tuned it with a bit of crossfade. And that's it. You know, I've actually used that in a couple places as well in the drop. Um, very handy. So that's all the synths. And then, I mean, those are the main things. Down here, we've got, what have I got? A little vocal sample. Yeah. I've stretched that out. It was quite short. Um, and then I've just stretched it out. Yeah. Added the sample delay to make it really wide, and again, that's just reverb, reverb. Yeah. Yeah. And I've actually got that just going as going as well, um, along with the second half of the drop, just to add another element in. Cut some lows out again, just so it stays out of the way of all the low end sample delay, still to keep it really wide. And I'm actually side chaining this one again, so just so it pumps with a kick. Same reverb settings as well. This is just a bit of air candy. This is just a water drop. But you can see I've sent it to it. Uh, I've put a stereo delay on it. Just, you know, just to be different, really. Reverse crash. We've all heard those before. Sweep up. Snare build. Using a sound shifter here, and I'm just modulating the um, the ratio, which is, you know, just the pitch. Big snare, everyone's got one of those in their, in their back pocket. This is just a, a riser. Um, which is side chaining and just a bit of an impact at the start here. And that's that. That's that. And you can see here, this other donk is just the exact same as this channel. I've just dropped it down um, and I've just, you know, 
put one in there for a little offbeat sort of, you know, fill, basically. So that's it. Really simple. Um, not many sounds used. Just use the right ones. Treat them with a bit of, you know, care when you're looking for the samples. Choose the right samples. Um, and, yeah, you know, the real magic is making sure you've got the right sound. So with your lead, obviously. So this guy here is obviously, he, it's the star. This is the main lead. Um, this is what the whole drop's about, really. That combined with the way you program your melody, those two things, if you get those two things done as you know, really well, then you're going to have a great drop, and then you'll have a great track. Because you know, if you're going for a future house track, you've got to have that right sound. You've got to have 